Well, we got some rain coming down. Rain and fog. I guess my trailer and truck wash ain't gonna do any good, but still had to wash all that sand and snow and gunk from the road. You know how it is, get your truck really dirty. But I wanted to tell you uh, about my experience with Love. So I had a PM service I had to get done soon because I had only 1,800 miles left and I usually change every 15,000. So I was in uh, Cannon, New York at the Love's there. And I pulled in, got PM service done to unhook my trailer because I was greasing my trailer myself out in the parking lot with my grease gun. So I pulled in and got PM service done. It was uh, done pretty quickly, so it wasn't too long. It wasn't really a wait. And uh, the guy that did it, he was new, and I, I didn't realize he was new until after. But uh, thing is, I went and got in my truck. He was like, okay, everything's done now good to go so I said I don't have to cycle it or anything he was like no you're good so I was like okay so I backed right out of the bay the garage as soon as I backed out I backed out and around and back right to my trailer hooked up to my trailer and my truck cut off so I was like what in the world my truck cut off so then I was uh, cycling my key a couple of times and then after that I tried to start it again it wouldn't start so I did it maybe I don't know 30 times cycling key and everything still wouldn't start I was like man why is it not starting opened the hood was checking everything there was no fuel in the bowl and every time i would cycle the key you know it would just run it wouldn't give the distinct like pumping sound from the fuel thing or whatever so i was telling the guy i was like hey man can you come take a look at my truck and everything he's like yeah i gotta go down the street on a call real quick and then i'll be right back in no time it should be quick and simple and i was like uh okay and he was like you just have to keep cycling because we just changed the filter so that's the problem so if I was in a hurry or something, I didn't have nothing to do. I would have told him, like, I paid you. What you mean you're going somewhere? You need to figure this out first, you know? I was kind of a little irritated, but I was like, whatever, he'll be right back. So he was gone for, like, I don't know, 20 minutes. And the whole time I was cycling, cycling, cycling. And uh, tried to start it, didn't start. So I was like, what the crap? So then he comes back, and he was like, oh, I had to grab a tool. I forgot a tool. If it's still not done when I get back, then we'll put some fuel in there and try to, you know, do it. So I was like, okay came back and he was like yeah i talked to my head mechanic and he said cummings is the only motor you're not supposed to cycle and uh, all the other motors you're supposed to fill up the filters with fuel and fill up the bowl with fuel but this one you don't have to and another guy came over there and he was looking uh he just came back off from the road so he was like let me take a look for you and i was like okay at least somebody's willing to try to help me because the guy that did it was new and the guy that was telling me you know he had a roll call and would come back he was like the service advisor or whatever on duty that time so he didn't really know what he was doing either so this was like a, a light skin uh, guy who just came out from the road and he was kind of like heavier set and short and I forgot his name wish I would have got it because he's a good guy and he knows what he's doing so he was looking and he was like oh you got some bubbles coming off the side of your filter I was like, yeah, the other guy seen it and he tried to tighten it down. And he said, he thinks it uh, should be good now, but I was like, my truck won't start. So he's like, yeah, that's not good. He got filter wrench and undid the filter, took off the filter and he was like, hey, where's the uh, rubber seal at? And the uh, guy was like, well, I know I put it on there. I don't know where it is. And then we got to look and took off the filter and it was like down in the bowl, bottom of the bowl. I guess it had like, he didn't put it on there right and then he started tightening and it came off in the back so that was the whole problem it wasn't sealed properly so it was just like air was escaping and it wouldn't allow the fuel to pump in there so once he did that and tightened it down and recycled the key three times and then the truck started right away and then it's been fine ever since but i was all paranoid and everything and frustrated and i was standing out in the cold the whole time i was freezing I had my hat on and stuff but it was like freezing and like drizzling a little bit and this took me probably like an hour after I got it done trying to figure out the problem, cycling, cycling, cycling like the other guys telling me and everything. Nobody wouldn't help me until the guy finally came off from the road. So I was like, I shouldn't have to do all this. I paid them to do it. You know, why am I doing all this? But I was just trying to find out the problem, but finally we got it figured out. So that was a headache in itself. I'm in uh, Erie, PA at the TA. Just came back from breakfast. I had uh, went and took a shower and got some breakfast, but 
Uh, Country Pride wasn't open yet. They opened a little bit later today. I came in last night. Uh, well, yesterday afternoon. Probably about, I don't know, 2 or 3 o'clock. And uh, I went to the shop because on the way down here, I had an ABS light on my dash, kept uh, coming on. So anyways, I uh, was driving and it came on and light would just stay on the dash. So I would pull over and I would do that, try to open it up a little bit and go turn off the truck, turn back on the truck and start driving. It would, you know, wouldn't come back on and then it would come on again after a little bit. So I was like, yeah, I'll just go to the TA because I have to do a reset and everything anyways. And I'll get my truck worked on while I'm there. So I ended up getting the receptacle box replaced. It was like $125 and some change or something like that. So uh, I replaced it and everything uh, because I had actually broken the ABS prong, the bottom piece of the split. I actually broke it off because I was like, kept opening it so much and stuff. So I guess I kept bending it and broke it off. So I said for sure, you know, that's gonna be the problem now because you know, I was messing with it. So here's the front of the trailer. And then right here where you're electrical plug the green one plugs into your receptacle box so here's all the prongs the middle prong is for the abs so as he has it has a top portion and a bottom portion there i was broke off at the bottom because uh sometimes if your abs light comes on you have to put something in the middle there and try to open it a little bit and i also noticed while i was there that one of my airbags were leaking from underneath the center of the airbag. Anyways, I pulled out from the truck wash and then from the truck wash to the parking lot, the light came on again. So I was like, what the heck? I guess it wasn't the problem, but I'm the one told him, you know, it was the plug, the receptacle box because I broke off the prong too, you know, so I had to get it replaced anyways. So I went back to him, hey, the light's still on. They was like, okay, we don't have the door right now, but once we get the door, then you can pull in and we'll take a look at it. So the guy took a look at it and finally after I got door and this is what he found. So as you can see here, the green uh, little uh, plug to the left looks a little uh, melted and uh, it's got some corrosion in there and just doesn't look good and that's the problem what he found and on the other side of the uh, plug as you'll see here in a minute the other side of the plug the little green thing right here to the uh, bottom center of the screen is kind of a little melted and corroded so that's what he think the problem was the connection there so we'll see as i start driving if that what it was that's what he said it was so that's what we went with and uh, hopefully that was the problem once i had pulled back over there to get the uh abs uh line fixed or whatever and he told me that was the problem and fixed connection then he came to me and was like hey you know you got an airbag leaking too don't you and i was like uh yeah if you have it in stock you know you can go ahead and change it so he said let me check we usually carry them for the kenworth T680, so it's probably like a aftermarket or generic brand. It says HD value, so I don't know, but they fixed it and uh, it's all good now. So, yeah, that's uh, what's been going on with me uh, last couple of days. And uh, happy new year to all of you guys, and uh, hope you're enjoying the content I'm putting out. And if you have any suggestions or something you want to see, just uh, leave a comment below and I'll try my best. And uh, also uh, share the video with somebody because uh, I'm trying to get some more subscribers. We're almost to 100 subscribers and uh, thinking I want to do something special once we get to 100 subscribers. So uh, help me uh, make that possible and always stay blessed. See you guys.